Hello, everyone. Good morning. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining this session where Rob and I will explore the critical role of network infra in supporting large scale AI training operations at Meta. We're excited to share these insights with you, and we hope that today's talk will provide a comprehensive understanding of the complexities and solutions in managing AI networks at scale. Let's start by setting the stage with an overview of how our networks are structured, focusing on their distinct roles and importance. Historically, for our traditional workloads, we had a multi-stage topology that we used to manage massive amounts of data efficiently. This architecture is designed to provide high scalability and robust fault tolerance by using a spine and leaf structure. One of the key features here is redundancy. We have multiple paths between any two points to ensure continuous availability and service, even if one or more paths fail. The front-end fabric plays a crucial role in the AI training ecosystem. This fabric is designed to efficiently accommodate data ingestion. It also supports the init and management of the communication libraries. By optimizing data ingestion and control traffic, the front-end fabric facilitates a seamless, efficient network that enhances the overall performance of the AI training process. And while front-end is great, we need a separate back-end network for dedicated GPU to GPU comms. We know there are unique requirements for these operations as they involve intensive data processing and real-time sharing across multiple GPUs. By segregating GPU to GPU comms to a dedicated backend, we ensure that these high bandwidth, low latency interactions are optimized. Managing and monitoring the network performance also becomes easier. It helps maintain consistent performance levels and reduces the likelihood of disruptions or bottlenecks that could be caused by faults in the wider data center network. Another benefit is the fact that a dedicated network can be specifically tailored with platforms and protocols that are best suited for HPC scenarios. If we sum up, these networks are designed to cater to a broad spectrum of computing needs. The front end offers robust and adaptable capabilities for general applications, while the back end provides a specialized high performance environment that is tailored for the demanding needs of AI training. Together, these two distinct yet complementary fabrics form a comprehensive solution. Hopefully, this provides a bit of color on how our networks are set up. Let's explore the unique challenges that we face in maintaining network reliability. To do this, it's useful to get a sense of our topologies. What we have here is our first generation backend topology. The network hosts are connected to leaves. The interconnectivity between those leaves is provided by a spine layer, the leaf switch known as RTSW or rack training switch resides within the AI rack alongside two super nodes and it connects to 16 GPUs. On the uplink side, the RTSW is connected to 18 CTSWs. This topology enables the support of up to 252 AI racks, accommodating a total of 4,000 GPUs within a single AI zone. To ensure the reliability of the training jobs, it is essential to have a robust solution in place for the rapid detection, triage, and ultimately mitigation of any failures. For example, take this situation, the failure of one of the CTSWs, in this case, number nine. This will affect 118 of the traffic of all racks. This is, of course, assuming there's no other maintenance happening on the cluster. Upon detecting the failure, the system should immediately trigger an alert for automation which should then quickly assess the extent of the impact and execute any potential mitigation. This brings us to challenges. In managing our network infra, there are several challenges that require strong strategies and proactive measures. The first one starts with observability. Our performance and reliability hinge on our ability to observe a wide array of metrics effectively. The challenges that come from packet loss, particularly on the backend network, can lead to significant performance regression. Hardware-related issues such as FPGA or ASIC errors can also present substantial problems. Additionally, we must keep track of platform health metrics such as resource utilization, temperatures, or other component failures. Now, by collecting extensive data, we encounter the challenge of Uber visibility, where the volume of detections can simply be overwhelming. The key difficulty here lies in framing these signals 
to identify the most probable root causes without solely relying on manual triage. This process must be supported by statistical analysis and specific metric snapshots, which sometimes require collaboration between our teams and external vendors. And lastly, we have capacity impact, where balancing capacity with reliability presents its own sets of challenges. While our front-end network is generally over-provisioned to prevent service impact, the back-end network directly ties capacity to performance. Any loss in capacity on the back-end can drastically impact UPS and lead to potential job failures. Proactively managing these failures involves draining network elements that show any sign of degradation, effectively removing capacity from production. It's worth noting that these challenges are common to the front-end and back-end networks, but the non-blocking and latency-sensitive needs of the AI clusters have been a forcing function for us. They have pushed our teams to evolve and scale those solutions to keep up with the demands of AI. And with this, I will hand off to Rob to talk about how we have managed these challenges. Thank you, Jose. With these challenges in mind, let's talk about how we've evolved our network tooling and our processes to support large-scale AI training across Meta's front-end and back-end networks. Our starting point was asking ourselves this question. Can we predict and mitigate failures before they impact jobs? Let's explore. To evolve our network monitoring and repair, we implemented a three-stage strategy designed to enhance efficiency and reliability across our network. The first theme involved implementing a monitor strategy that combines both passive and active techniques. By integrating these methods with contextual data, we enhance visibility and identify service level impacts more effectively. This holistic view allows us to detect and address issues proactively, ensuring that network operations maintain a high level of performance and reliability. In the second theme, we focus on refining our triage process by implementing context-aware monitoring that provides granularity at the data center, AI, AI zone, rack, and device scopes. We can better correlate detections across different scopes of a DC network. This enhanced correlation is crucial for actively and accurately pinpointing the root causes of issues. By streamlining this process, we minimize downtime and improve the precision of our diagnostic efforts. The final theme centers on expediting the repair process. Once a precise root cause is identified and a repair action is initiated, we have established a strict SLO that focuses on driving improvements in the repair process and minimizing the time required to return affected network capacity to service. This rapid response capability is key to maintaining resilience and efficiency, ensuring that the network is highly available. So let's talk about integrated monitoring and what it means at the data center space at Meta. So passive monitoring is a traditional approach in instrumentation. This involves detecting, triaging, alarming, based on events and counters on box. The sources for these include SNMP, vendor-specific counters, log patterns, custom commands. Now, we run a heterogeneous network, which means we have a mix of both meta-designed and vendor-specific hardware platforms. So this can cause a fragmentation in the space with regards to our detection strategy. To this end, we have a custom agent that unifies our approach to traditional monitoring. Data collection occurs on the device and is ingested centrally, facilitating aggregate alerting and real-time trending. This on-box agent enhances monitoring by enabling combinatorial detections and look-back windows. These capabilities significantly reduce noise, allowing for more precise alerts. For example, indicating a line card failure instead of triggering multiple alerts for each port and protocol event that was generated. Active monitoring plays a crucial role where passive methods fall short, particularly when devices fail to self-report issues. This method provides a constant and clear baseline for packet loss and latency, essential for ensuring network integrity. It involves using probes to measure loss in TCP and RDMA networks via distributed measurement agents across the fleet. These agents perform failure triangulation and provide aggregated data at various network scopes, such as rack, pod, and AI zone levels. Ultimately, active monitoring offers a holistic view of network health, catching problems that might be overlooked by per-device passive monitoring. At the high level, this is a flow of holistic network management at Meta. By using active and passive techniques in parallel, we create a robust system that leverages the strengths of each method. In the passive path, on-box agents unify detections and send them to our triage and correlation pipeline, and eventually repair. In the active path, our approach to measuring reliability involves analyzing performance based on good and bad minutes evaluated against established reliability thresholds. We use NetNORAD, which is our distributed packet loss measurement platform, as a data source for our robust SLI framework. The network SLI framework translates the data from NetNORAD into distinct events, 
each minute of network delivery per scope is deemed either good or bad, depending on whether it exceeds established thresholds. Now, each detected event is categorized by a period of bad minutes, and that's analyzed with evidence collected from both passive monitoring and real-time evidence collection. By continuously feeding and refining these systems with new data, we improve the signal quality and enhance our ability to detect distinct events more effectively. Both active and passive monitoring go downstream into triage. So let's look at some details on how that side works. So even with all the noise reduction features provided by on-box agents in passive monitoring and the loss thresholds in active monitoring, we still end up with thousands of distinct events from every device in every layer of our network. So here's a mix of different events we might see on any given moment of the network. A host with reduced throughput, a spine device with BGP peer down or port down events, active SLI breaches in a particular data center. This is just one sample set, which is difficult to parse without context. Now imagine this at a 10,000 X scale. So the first step we do is we overlay these events via topology. This context establishes relationships between different distinct events and anomalies. Our correlation engine is topology aware, meaning that we configure different scopes of our network and how they're related to each other. If only a single event were happening per topology, this would normally be sufficient, but of course that's not the case. The next step is we have to analyze detailed events and correlate them through established topology relationships. And ultimately this results in the correlation engine building related events into a single case with an established problem type. Now for context, the correlation rate at which it happens on the meta network averages about 250 to one, some more, some less. So rather than a thousand unique events incoming, we might see four cases with an established problem type. For the example above, we have failing fabric switch, which is causing downstream and upstream failures. And these get correlated into a single problem type. Now this gives us a few options. We can auto remediate the root cause, or perhaps this requires slightly more complex manual triage. So as much as we try to eliminate manual triage using automation, it's a process that occasionally has to occur. To enhance our manual triage abilities, we've built a system that captures detailed snapshots of on-box state immediately after an issue is detected. The system is a crucial component of our management strategy, providing deep insights to the network's operational state during incidents. At the core of our approach is an on-box agent specifically designed to capture comprehensive snapshots of logs, system counters, routing states, and vendor-specific debug information quickly, ensuring that we preserve the exact state of the device at the time of the incident. By maintaining these detailed snapshots, we avoid the time-consuming challenge of failure state duplication where relevant data might normally be lost or overwritten before analysis. These snapshots are integrated into internal and external triage pipelines. So when a network device fails, the captured data is automatically linked to generated tickets, providing our engineers and support teams with immediate access to relevant diagnostic information. The integration of, of the snapshot data into our vendor management system streamlines the RMA process as well. Vendors can access the detailed snapshots directly through the system, allowing them to quickly understand the issues and expedite replacement of faulty equipment. This seamless access not only speeds up the resolution process, but also enhances our collaboration with our hardware vendors, ensuring that maximum uptime and performance are maximized. So now, no matter how good we are at triage, when capacity is taken offline for repairs, it increases the risk to the network. To this end, we set up strict SLOs for MTTR, which align with our established safe capacity buffers. These safe capacity buffers define how much capacity can be offline before we start to see an impact to network reliability. Additionally, in AI training networks, offline capacity is directly correlated to performance and job completion rate. Now, the creation of these service level objectives is merely the beginning and not the end. The true value of SLOs is realized when they're utilized to drive enhancements in automation and design. SLOs are not just theoretical targets, but practical tools that are, effective, that are actively guide and improve our automation strategies. They should be actionable, providing clear directives for automating processes and refining system responses. Without this focus on automation, setting SLOs can drive and re reward manual heroics instead of driving meaningful improvements to operational efficiency or effectiveness. The practicality and utility of SLOs are heavily dependent on our ability to measure and analyze them quickly and accurately. If we struggle to quantify or interpret these objectives efficiently, their effectiveness is significantly compromised. For instance, consider the mean time to repair metric, which is straightforward to measure and critical for driving operational improvements. 
MTTR offers clear insights into the average time required to repair a network element, serving as a direct indicator of reliability and maintenance efficiency. Now, it can also be broken down into subcomponents for analysis, but the simplicity of focusing on end to end MTTR as an SLO is what drives our action and our focus. So, as we move forward, Jose is going to cover the results and observations from our initiatives. Thank you, Rob. We can say that we have definitely experienced significant enhancements across every aspect of the pipeline. We have achieved consistent models for detection, mitigation, and repair across our very diverse platforms. This progress, coupled with our work on reliability SLIs, has enabled us to uncover patterns and opportunities for improvement that were previously unrecognized or simply unsupported by concrete data. One example is that not all failures have the same impact on our workloads. We see that, for instance, port events have an excessively large impact compared to other problem types. And we're talking about orders of magnitude here. This insight has directed our focus towards addressing these critical issues before any other work. We have also been able to better manage systemic issues such as repeat offenders and slow burn type problems. This approach has driven us to identify and address root causes that were not immediately apparent, but consistently consume data center resources, remove capacity from the network, and often resulted in no fault found repairs. This was particularly evident with issues related to optics and certain temperature anomalies. Lastly, the emphasis on reducing our time to repair has been crucial. By consistently meeting and improving our SLO targets over time, we transform network failures from major performance setbacks into minor inconveniences that can be swiftly managed at higher levels. The diligent tracking, refinement, and consistency of our repair process has visibly enhanced how our customers experience the AI network, underscoring the critical role of effective repair in maintaining network availability and ultimately user satisfaction. So coming back to the question that we posed at the beginning, can we predict and mitigate failures before they impact jobs? Our answer today is yes, we can. Now let's discuss the future. We have many ideas that we wish to develop and explore, but if we focus on just three, these are the ones that we have. The first is implementing active monitoring for application level anomalies such as bit flips. We consider this to be crucial. These subtle issues can cause significant data corruption, often escalating on notice until they become much larger problems. The second area that we want to explore in the future is improving the accuracy of our triage process, especially in scenarios with extended repair timelines like RMA situations. Just like Rob highlighted earlier, enhancing the precision of our initial assessment can streamline the repair process significantly. The last one is further increasing our capabilities. We plan to expand our network monitoring tool, Network SLI, to cover more network scopes and include latency aware features. To summarize, integrating AI training workloads into the DC has drastically increased the demands on performance and reliability, particularly when thinking about bandwidth, latency, and loss tolerance. The increased use of GPUs needs robust operations. This emphasizes the need for continuous improvement to prevent bottlenecks, handle failures, and maintain maximum availability. We consider that we have surpassed reliability targets for AI workloads using our customized in-house solutions that have been tailored to meet our operational needs and have ultimately helped set new reliability benchmarks. As technologies and demands evolve, ongoing adaptation and innovation are essential. This space is evolving very quickly and we believe that our proactive approach ensures that we can handle the increasing demands of GPU workloads while maintaining operational excellence and effectively supporting critical functions. Staying ahead requires constant experimentation to ultimately ensure that our solutions are scalable and adaptable. Thank you very much for your attention.